Morag, I'm sure you're an absolute angel in school, but was there a class that you perhaps really hated? There must have been one. Yeah, there was. Maths, Miss Thainston, I remember it so, so well, even now. I'm sure she remembers you too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so I imagine you were passing the time by filling up the, uh, the back of your textbook with some kind of happy scrawling mess. That's one way of putting it. Yeah. yeah, before Pythagoras theory came along and could bore me to death, I amused myself with mindless doodles, just counting down the minutes to break time. Now, if only some visionary had handed you a pair of scissors, you might have become the next primary school Mobius. Hmm, debatable, perhaps. But probably more likely the only creation would be some kind of injury. It would still have been creative, no doubt. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But even when young Mobius was at school, the results were in fact fantastic. In fact, for all human beings, before scissors and textbooks, but not Pythagoras. You don't even know who he is, do you? Bones were used for writing, and stones and shells were transformed with one little hole and a piece of string. Porcelain, metal, leather were even at such an early stage already the canvas for the work of gifted hands. However, paper making unfolded in China and was delivered... Oh my God, stop it with a dad joke. ...to the world, and those with the mastery of the brush turned their sights beyond mere script. Yeah, wherever the paper went, so too did paper cutting. Take a look at these Day of the Dead paper cuts and these Christmas cuts. And just look at these modern cuttings by Maryland artist Beth White, themed on 19th century scenes. China's style, however, is very distinct. Firstly, they're red, the colour of joy and blessing in Chinese culture. Of course. And secondly, there are different designs for different occasions. Fish, for example, specifically the carp when shown leaping across the dragon's gate, represents the transcending of its own realm. You might also see fish images in schools because climbing that social ladder for most means beginning with getting unusually high grades. Its name also sounds like the Chinese word for sufficient, yu, so you see them a lot in festivals, especially around New Year. Mm -hmm. And this character is popular in marriage because it means double luck. You're gonna need that. I think she will. Longevity peaches known as Shou Tao and also cranes represent the word for long life and they're very popular with the senior generation and me. Again, highly appropriate. If these designs get confusing, then don't worry. You can just point and say, yeah, yeah, that one means blessings. All your foreign tourist friends will nod along and say, oh, isn't that just lovely? Great American impression. Uh -huh. Like they understand and they will still think you're an expert on your own culture. Which of course you are, right? If you want to get more specific though, they are round because ancient philosophy holds that the square of a window represents order and restriction. And only by applying this kind of discipline can the dream of the perfect round be achieved. Because paper cutting is not only a pretty art form, it's also a shared activity between family members and friends in Chinese tradition. It's a way of bonding and something which, from a very young age, uh, young Chinese learn Beginning pretty much in primary school, mm. actually. Aye, in fact, the biggest paper cutting in the world is actually larger than a basketball court. And it took a husband and wife team 15 months to make. Where did they find the time? More to the point, where did the basketball team practice? <laughs> and if you think that's epic, you should see the window they hung it on. Now, if you want to take it 3D, then look what's happened here. Even walnuts aren't safe from the skilled hand of the Chinese carver. Absolutely nuts. Mm. Who's doing the dad jokes now? Now how about this? Or a piece of rice. And Morag, have you ever seen an Easter egg that looks like this? It seems like there are very few limits when it comes to carving things out of nothing. Whether it's the Dunhuang grottos or a piece of rice, paper can be so much more than the mortal enemy of rock and scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone can get their hands on a tasty slice of jade or a local cave, you know. But paper, upon its invention, was not only a revolution for the literacy and media, but also unleashed the world's creativity. The world's creativity. We hope you've enjoyed unfolding this episode. Hey. It's time to wrap things up. I hope I remember, only to make like Morag's bar tab and keep it, keep it open. It open.